Fantastic. Welcome to Mrs. Calabash Cooks. Come into my kitchen. Uh, it's snowing outside, so that's a sure sign that Christmas is approaching. And once I start making tortillere, you know that Christmas is getting close. I actually make my tortillere and then put them in the freezer. And I will actually slice them so that I can bring a couple of slices out uh, when required. Now, the recipe that I've given you here will make a one inch pie dish. Now, if you don't want to be bothered to make the pastry, the pre-made uh, pastry cases, you know, the pie cases, excuse me, I've got an itch. Uh, pre-made pie cases work beautifully. Uh, put one in, you'll fill in, and then another one on the top. You can buy store-made pastry, perfectly fine, especially this time of the year, good product, but I like to make my own. It's just, um, it's just me. So, I've already, um, I, I've got a mixture of lean beef, veal and pork. I like the mixtures of the three meats. Some people like to put uh, lamb in instead of veal, but I like the mixture of the pork and the, and the beef. And onions, garlic, water, and I cook them. So all that is prepared and so are the mashed potatoes. Now, I've put garlic in and my seasoning. The one thing to remember when making tortillere is it has to be well seasoned. That's the joy of tortillere. So make sure your meat is well seasoned and cook your potatoes with some salt and season your potatoes. We can always add some seasoning later, but we can't take it away. So come with me to the back of the stove and we're going to put the uh, potatoes in the ground beef. So let's go over here. You see, I've actually got a pot of uh, soup cooking for lunch. So let's put these over here. These are my potatoes. The recipe said um, the recipe said one large potato. Well, the potatoes I had, the largest were about that size. So, you know, use your common sense. Look at it. Make some potato. It doesn't matter if you have a little bit more. You can always use it either in soup or some fried potato. Or you can make some fish cakes out of it. It won't go to waste. And this is the meat. I've actually got f just under four pounds of meat there. So I doubled the recipe. Just under. So let's put some potato in. Nice mashed potato. And this takes away, it adds a nice bit of body to the meat. And if the meat... I've let the meat cool, and if the, I, I use gra uh, really, really lean meat for my, uh, for my meat, but if the meat is a little bit greasy, when it cools, the grease will rise to the surface. Just skim that off. And actually, that makes a, a really tasty meat, because the meat, um, if it's too lean, it has no taste to it. But... So we're just adding potato to it. And I'm going to check the seasoning after this. I think it's going to take all this potato. The seasoning is a very personal um, seasoning with tortillere. I lived in Quebec and so I, that was my first introduction to tortillere. Um, even in France, we, we ate tortillere, but that was a, a meat pie. Any pie was a, any savoury pie was a tortillere. You could have fish tortillere, uh, but it was just a tortillere. It was, wasn't seasoned the same as it is here in Canada. So that was my first um, introduction to tortillere. Now, I want to taste this. Make sure that the seasoning is really good.
You can taste the cloves, the savoury. Num, 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 num. I'm hesitating. It just needs a tiny little addition of salt. Nothing more, just a small addition. And we'll taste that. I do like the taste of the cloves and the savoury. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. So let's take this over here. Now, as I say, I do have, I have roughly three and three quarter pounds of meat in there because I bought it from the grocery store and it was already pre-packaged. So I have already rolled out some pastry. This is a nine inch, roughly a nine inch, and this is uh, about a six inch. My very old flan cases. So what we're going to do, we'll fill up the nine at this large one first. Whoa, let's take it closer. Push it to the edge. And if there's any meat left over, or it doesn't matter, we can freeze it and then I can make another tortillere later. So we need a nice, a nice helping of meat in there. It is expensive to make, is a tortillere. That's why um, I like to make it and make two at a time. There we are. And it is a bit, uh, it is a little bit fiddly. Now you see, I've got a lot of meat left over. So let's just, we don't want it too full because it's going to boil out. But that, the rest of that tortillere meat will go labeled and go back into the fridge, into the freezer. Let's just move this off the table to begin with. So we've just got one. Now, I think that was the large one. Let's have a look. This can be rolled out a little bit more. Let me just check which is which. No. Nope. That's the large one, that's the smaller one. I just put it in some cling film and kept it in the fridge. So we want to seal. I'm going to, we, just in case we need to roll it out a little bit more. And remember, the roll side is always the better side when you uh, cooking. So let's have a look. Boom. We can roll that out just a little bit more because we want it to uh, come over the top. My rather large rolling pin. So short sharp bursts like that. There we are. And we want to seal the edges. So I've just got a little egg wash here, which is, I've put some egg and water together. So we want to seal the edges like that. And actually this time of the year, I usually, what I normally do is make up some pastry, just rub it in and I keep it in the fridge. Now, look what I've done. Oh, there we are. Don't worry. Let's just put that together. Now to put it over, 
just lift it like so, put it on there and just pull out. Now, we want to press down with this finger like that. Let the pastry come over the edge like that. There we are. And press down the edge like so. Lift it up and with that end of a knife, that side of the knife, just push it against the pastry like that. Put that to one side. Again, with the thumb, just press down. We want to seal that edge. Like that. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you. Take these two fingers and this finger. Put your finger there. Pull back with this finger and push with that finger. Like that. And that makes a pretty edge and it seals the edges together. There we are. Now I'm going to brush, we need to make a slit in the top so that the steam can escape. But let's do the egg wash first because the egg will bind everything together. And you don't want that slit to be bound to uh, be filled in. So just let's make that. Go into the little dimples like that. Look, that looks a bit big. So let's do another one there like that. I've got my old fashioned pastry brush like that. There we are. Just put it in like that. And now we need, I'm going to do a couple of slits like that. And so to make it look a bit prettier, we've got all this pastry left over. Just pull it together. A little more flour like that. Let's get that out of the way. And we're going to make some leaves. Don't stretch the pastry by going all ways with it. Short, sharp bursts. Just make sure that it's well floured. And so we're going to make a strip like that. You can make a rose by rolling it up. So, but I like to make leaves. So leaves have got veins in, like that, you see? And so just twist like that. You don't have to be, the nice thing about this is I'm not artistic and you don't have to be artistic to make it look pretty. We need another one down there and another one up there. So we can use this bit of pastry rather than roll any more out. They don't have to be all one size. Leaves aren't all the same size. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. There we are. And we'll put that one there like that. And then gather up the bits and pieces. There we are. Let's get rid of those. Clean the board a little bit. And let's just brush that with a little egg so that that is nicely browned. 
like that. Make sure that that vent is opened well. There we are. And so that's all there is. Oh, look, I missed one. There we are. That's all there is to tortier. So I'm putting it on a baking sheet. Two reasons. One, if it boils over, because there's quite a lot of juice in there, you're not going to mess up the oven. Another reason is this gets hot and it cooks the underside of the pastry. Because sometimes you can get a little raw bit in the center of pastry if the oven hasn't got an even heat. So if you use a baking sheet, put it on a baking sheet, especially if you're using a glass baking dish, this will help just to cook the underside of the pastry. My oven's on 400, so it's all nice and warm. So here we go, folks. All ready to be cooked. So come back and join me in about 20 minutes, half an hour, and it will be cooked. So I'll see you then. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You can see I've had a clean up. I took the opportunity whilst we were cooking to uh, get the flour off the floor. Look at me. I, I'm not a clean cook. So I got the flour off the floor, the pots washed, and so let's have a look. There's a nice smell, so I think they're about ready. So let's have a look in the oven. I say they because you can see what I've made in a minute. Ooh, there we are. Look, two um, tortillas. Now you'll notice, I'm going to cancel the oven. Whoops, there we are. You'll notice that they're not overcooked because you can either freeze these raw, the pastry raw, and cook from frozen, but I like to cook and then just reheat. So as soon as they're going to go back in the oven again, I don't overcook the pastry at this stage. And because I had some pastry left over, I made what we call in England some pate, uh, pasties, pasties. So let's take these over here and we'll bring the pasties over in a minute. I need, let's put that on there. So these will now need to cool before we freeze them. We can take them out of the tins or what I'm going to do, whoops, we've taken a bit of pastry off. What I'm going to do is I let them cool because there's only two of us and we can't eat a whole tortier, even one of these small ones, unless we've got visitors or the family. So I actually slice them, I let them cool slice it and then freeze the slices so that way if we want tortillere for supper or for lunch I just take out a couple of slices and here's the pasties so Instead of a, a tortier pie, we've got a tortier pasty. And these are really easy to make. I used, um, to get the, the shape, I just used one of these little bread and butter side plates. Cut round that, put the meat in the centre, seal the edges and turn it over. And you have a pasty. So it's smelling a lot like Christmas. And guess what we're going to be having for supper tonight? Tortier pasties. So let me put this over here like that. And thank you very much for watching. And please go to mrscalabashcooks.com for the recipe. And uh, don't forget, we have our chat show at 7.30 sitting around the dining room table. Uh, every Tuesday, sitting around the dining room table at 7.30. And please 
go and watch Mrs. Calabash Cooks on a Friday at 2 p.m. and like the programme and share it with your friends, please. And thank you very much for watching. Music, maestro, please. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Then the line for twenty bucks. You keep on playing. Nobody's playing. Oh, Uncle Zantam dying. Doom.